and welcome to Airplay. Today's play is an adaptation of one of my own plays and was last produced at the FESPA Festival in New York City in 2015. It's called The Storyteller and features the amazing talents of Zoe Anastasio as Zanar, the storyteller, and our stage directions will be read by Lonnie Serez Cataldi. Thanks. The Storyteller by Connie Congoli Kepfinger. Time, eternity. Place, a beautiful garden in the ethers with all sorts of wild flowers and lush plant life teeming all around. Several species of furry little animals romp and play until Zanar, the storyteller, enters. She greets the flowers, acknowledges all life around her, then sits comfortably on the bench center stage. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Zanar's Story Corner. Here we find the time to take repose from our busy lives and trek out to the limits of imagination, maybe even beyond. Today we will hear the saga, Garrett the Blue Giraffe, a tall tale of modern distraction. Our story takes place at the Universal Park, New York, just outside of the Bronx Zoo. It's somewhere between time and space, known as the site of common intercession, where earthly creatures may consult with their heavenly counselors. There are 777 Universal Parks on planet Earth, all of which border on big city zoos. The sounds of traffic from the modern material world fade as we hear the voice of Israfel, a very enchanting divine messenger. Dressed in white flowing robes, Israfel sits on the bench, humming a heavenly tune while strumming a silver lute. His long golden locks sway in gentle rhythm with his body as he plays. He greets each passerby with a smile, then softly sings with bewitching passion. Suddenly, Israfel stops short as he sees Garrett approaching from behind the gates. Garrett is a tall yet humble figure. With a grand gesture, Israfel gestures and encourages him to come forward. Garrett emerges slowly and with caution. His hair hangs over his left eye, emphasizing his despondency and shyness. Well, hello, my friend. Oh, uh, hello, uh, I shouldn't have come, uh, I, I'm so sorry. Welcome, my young friend. In honor of you, I may sing today. Are you my, my heavenly counselor? That I am. And you must be Garrett. Garrett the blue and sad giraffe. They shake hands. Israfel looks about, then motions towards the bench, asking Garrett to sit. Trembling, Garrett squawks and draws back. Well, shall we get started? He nods in accordance with Garrett. All right then, please do sit down. Uh, thank you. Garrett's sitting at the far end of the bench. I, I, I'm, I'm so to bother. But Israfel moves just a little closer to Garrett. Well now. Tell me about yourself, friend. Ah, uh, ah, uh, Garrett shrinks away. Well, I, I, uh, uh, he starts to shake. I didn't know, I didn't know. Israfel puts a calming hand on his shoulder. Please then, allow me to introduce myself. I am Israfel, angel of resurrection, angel of song. Usually, my purpose is to simply fetch the souls that are ready for the divine kingdom. But in your case, well, perhaps I was called in for my expertise in the field of dialectical discourse, my depth of compassion, my province of speciality in the arena of earthly endeavors has always been compassionate to those like yourself, a bit different and thus marginalized in society. Let's just say my mystical heartstrings can create music that will ultimately help you to change your melancholy tune. Garrett suddenly looks up. Do you really think that you can help me? Why, yes, of course. Now, shall we begin your divine appointment? Israfel retrieves a rather large notebook from his bag and begins to flip its pages. He makes a note with his silver ink pen. Uh, th thank you, yes. 
Garrett takes a deep sigh. Okay, now, your name is Garrett. And you are temporarily in human form for the meeting today. Is that correct? I actually love giraffes, you know? So splendiferous. Is that a word still? Sorry if my dialectical approach seems arcane. I've been doing this job forever, and frankly, I can never recall which century I'm in. Sorry to go off topic. I digress. I'm just so full of ideas. I truly amuse myself. They share a laugh. And so your species is giraffe, right? Nods with him. My, my report is not showing your age. I need your age so that we can realign your specific procreational coordinates of amplitude and frequency. Garrett drops his head and falls silent. Well, hmm, I'd say by the eloquence of your speech that you must be at least 17 or 18. He closes his notebook. Well, the statistics can wait. Garrett, oh, I'm very, very, very pleased to be here now to meet with you. For at this very moment in time, you are the subject of my call. For without you, there would be no need for me. Therefore, I must love and honor your presence as I would a king. Really? Garrett sighs heavily. Thank you, I, I think. Garrett, don't think about it, just know it. You're quite a lovely creature. I can see your inner nature and that's the one that matters most. Israfel strokes Garrett's cheek. They're caught in a moment of genuine tenderness. Speak freely, Garrett. I can feel your heart. It's very charitable for you to speak to me, I imagine. I mean, well, it's, uh, I mean, I'm gr thankful for you to take the, the time. I, I mean, I feel as though I have no right to discuss this possibility of change. I, I, I mean, I should be happy as I am. I mean, after all, I do have my health. Look, Garrett, don't put all this on yourself. We are part and parcel of the whole. We are all part of one big reality. And remember, this is your divine appointment. That means that if it, if it was forever meant to be, you are only partly instrumental in this orchestration of destiny for this meeting. It's partly my destiny as well. You must be thinking how ungrateful I must be. I should just be happy. I do have my health. Garrett jumps from the roaring sound of a nearby rhinoceros and falls off the bench. There, there, oh, mercy me, you must be more careful, Garrett. Israfel helps Garrett to his feet and they return to sitting comfortably on the bench. Be more gentle with yourself. G gentle? Garrett begins to reflect. E yes, that is what first attracted me to them. E yes, it was their gentleness. Everyone seems to think that since they're so m massive that they must be coarse and violent when in fact they're, they're truly some of the most gentle giants on the planet. Israfel reassures him. Yes, appearances can and will be deceiving. I, I guess I am a bit hard on myself. Still, I, I'm afraid. I want, I want, oh, I should just be happy. I, I do have my, oh, oh, no. He's starting to cry. Oh, I'm so unappreciative. Shh. Israfel softly puts his finger to Garrett's lips and whispers. Now, listen to me, Garrett. Stop. I do not judge you. I judge no one. I know that you are sincere. You have no motive, no need for greed or power. This is your pure desire. You, Garrett, the blue giraffe, speak purely from your heart. And that's my language. In fact, the language of the heart is the only true language there is. It is the language of love and it flows from the compassionate heart of all creation. Well, it, it is my heart. I, I, can, I can feel it be beating, be beating, R reminding me all, always, always. Well then, Garrett, if you're feeling the one true heart of the universe, you must know that I can feel it too. 
I can know and understand. I feel your pain. I share your joy. We are one body with only one heart, and one mind. Those of us that are true, true to the music of our own destiny, can, will, and must dance to the singular tune of truth. Israfel embraces Garrett and begins to rock him gently as he sings. Mm -hmm. Once long ago, a young giraffe did go to meet his fate head on. He was a bit afraid and yet a promise there he made to embrace it and to face it with his heart. So then Garrett, are you ready? I'm afraid. I need you to stand up. You must face the music and, and dance with me. Garrett hesitates. Israfel lifts Garrett to his feet and hums the tune to start the dance. Mm -hmm. Garrett tries to dance but stumbles. Oh, oh I'm sorry. M maybe we should call this whole thing off. I, I f f felt like this whole experience was, was it, it's all in, in my mind. Y yet, I, I know, it's, it's in my heart. Oh, I, I have no right to ask for molecular reconstruction. I can never be a rhino. And I'm really n not a dancer either. Sorry, I, I tend to stumble a lot, which is strange too. I mean, I mean being a giraffe and, and all. Ah, see there? The process has begun. You've taken the first steps toward change. You were dancing. Israfel tries dancing with him again, this time ever so slowly. Garrett, you are really in tune with your inner self. Many creatures try to hide their desires, but the smoke from the fire only clouds their minds and pollutes the bigger picture. People think that their deep-rooted desires will go away. But once they're planted, they have no choice but to grow. Garrett, my fair friend, this is what really brings us all together in the Garden of Life. The affairs of the heart, the ultimate involvement. It's so simple, yet so complex. Well, I, I feel like I'm, I'm an emotional mess right now. <laughs> of course you are. Emotions are so very, very intricate so fine as they form the elaborate network of, of thoughts, and feelings and ideas between all living things. But sometimes, like vines, they get all tangled up. But, but what if, if, Garrett stutters and stammers, I, I mean, what if, if it isn't right for me? I mean, oh, I'm, I'm af afraid to even say, Let, let's get started, shall we? Israfel picks up his notebook as Garrett nods in agreement. Let us compare notes. It says here that you're considering an appeal for an audience with the creator. Is that correct? Y yes, that, uh, that's correct. Your request would be for molecular rearrangement? Y y yes, that, that's correct. Garrett, do you understand what that means? Yes. Well, well, no, n not really. I mean, I, I'm not e exactly sure. Molecular rearrangement is a process by which the unified theory of theoretical physics is able to predict and replace the values of all physical quantities in accordance with their specific charge on their particles. Therefore, you would expect that molecular rearrangement will be 100% effective, but the number of particles must be equal to that of the disposition of the desired mass. And there's always a possibility of the black hole. Part of the problem is that particles cannot classify themselves. They don't carry any form of identification. So if something is lost, it may reattach in an undefined arrangement of unpredictable sequence. Still, anything is possible in this game of life. 
it's a gamble. The dice are thrown. We can only place our bets. Oh, uh, all this talk is making me very sleepy, Israfel. Perhaps we should call it off. Israfel, determined, clears his throat. <clears throat> now then, can you tell me what kinds of feelings have prompted this sudden desire to become a rhinoceros? Oh, oh it wasn't at all sudden. But yes, I, I think I can tell you what it is that I'm feeling. Oh, if I could only find the right words. Oh, perhaps this is why giraffes are destined to, to live in silence. Israfel places his hand on Garrett's heart. Be gentle, Garrett, and speak from your heart, slowly, clearly. Go back to the time when you first saw a rhinoceros. When? Where? How did you feel? <clears throat> the sounds of nearby traffic morph into the pulse of the pride land. Nature awakens as Garrett recalls his fond memories. <sighs> There was a, a, a sudden stampede. A huge blaze broke into fires from, from the underbush. Mama told us to come quickly and to, to stay close, but I was knocked down. I couldn't get up fast enough. I, I was half trampled to death. Someone kindly kicked me off to the side and, and I lay there, badly broken for, for days. I slept most of the time only waking to see the moon and sunset and rise repeatedly. Then one morning, I awoke in a different place. I was surrounded by unfamiliar creatures, a mother and her newly born babies. There was a father nearby, but he would only interact with us through the, the mother. She was wonderful, so loving and kind and, and gentle. As the babies got larger, they, they used to try to play with me and Mama would use that word. Gentle, <laughs> gentle, she would say. And I was, I was no longer lo lonely. I lived for, with them for a very, very long time. They were my family. But the, then the hunters came, they took us all away. They, they, they brought us here to the zoo. I, I was placed with the giraffes and I don't belong there. I don't. This is why I want to be a rhinoceros. Now I can only see them through the crack in the wall between us. I want to be able to sing with them, to harmonize their gl glorious songs of truth, side by side with them, touching, feeling the essence of their reality. Yet if I stay as I am, uh, it's, it's that I shall never know. I, I stand off stage like an understudy, desperately waiting to go on, longing to say how much I love them, to speak of this burning desire within my soul, to sing out my love song. I hear their, their soulmate aria. It was written truly for the glory of their species. Oh, they are so special. They are the chosen ones. Oh, how I long to be with them, yet I am locked in this cave of silence. Garrett falls to his knees and begins to sob. Israfel consoles him. I beg you, why has the creator put me in such immortal bondage? Forgive me, sir, I beseech you. Surely this inescapable prison of insatiable passion has some purpose. Must I just suffer so in silence? Oh, Garrett, you're not in silence now, Israfel explains. You're, you're speaking and I'm listening, but, 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 but only for, for the moment. Soon I must return to being a, a giraffe and the fire in my heart may, may suffocate. I'm afraid that I will not be able to simply live on embers. I don't think it will sustain this gigantic spirit. There is always a way to vent the fire, my dear one. Must I be content with who I am? Could I have been miscast? You are Garrett, a giraffe with a very gentle spirit. Israfel stands beside him, gently putting his hand upon Garrett's shoulder. The great divine director never casts in error. You are who you are.
and yet, like all those evolving, you're becoming one with everything. We are all separate, yet connected. This, my fine friend, is merely your evolution. We all go through it. It's a period of adjustment. So be gentle on yourself, Garrett. Be the gentle giant that you are and walk with your, your head held high. Yes, in stillness and silence. A single tear falls from Garrett's eye and Israfel catches it. Your tear is mine now. Let me carry it for you now, Garrett. Thank you so much for, for coming, Israfel. Thank you for calling me, Garrett. You are truly a, a wonderful mentor, Israfel. Thank you. I, I do feel stronger and, and lighter, as if a burden has been lifted. Well, then I believe you're ready. Ready to begin the process of molecular reconstruction, my friend. Well, I, I don't know that I, I, I want to change anymore. I'm starting to feel very good about myself, <laughs> inside and out. Well, this is wonderful, Garrett. Truly it is. Hmm. Sometimes the biggest changes are not changes at all.